And of course you don't know how to make those. So what you do is you go to your carbon database and you type in synthesis of pirate souls. And it gives you 5,000 hits. But of course nobody can read those 5,000 hits. So you narrow your search down to say a manageable 20 or 30 or 50 hits. But if you do that, who guarantees that you do not miss out on the one method that is particularly relevant for your product or for your project that you have to make. So if you face such a, a question, such a situation, I would argue with you that you are much better off if you start through science of synthesis. Because the hard work has already been done for you by the experts in the field. The experts in the field who know about aerosols, they went through this list of the 5,000 entries and it was their duty basically to sort out all the methods that do have a meaningful scope and condense all the information into a chapter. And so if you go to aerosol chapters in science of synthesis within a half an hour or an hour, you have a very good overview over all the relevant, relevant methods that do have a meaningful scope. And based on that information, you can then start to dig much deeper into that literature. And you use the big database, which is behind science of synthesis, which is fully searchable by text, and by structure, etc., etc. And that saves you time. And that allows you to win out. And on top of this, science of synthesis also provides you directly with the procedures. So you don't have to link back to the original procedures in order to know if the particular method that you are considering works at cryogenic conditions or works at room temperature. All that information is already condensed there. So the mission of science of synthesis is to provide high quality information, pre-evaluated, sorted information uh, that has been assessed by the experts in the field. Now the standards, this mission of producing quality, the quality product is ensured by an editorial board currently consisting of nine people. You can read the names and you will see that some of those people belong to the most accomplished organic synthesis of the older generation and the younger generation from industry and from academia alike. So, well, you might think, okay, he's the editor-in-chief, so he has to say something good about this product, obviously. Now, that's fair enough. If you don't believe that my words are trustworthy, I can give you two pieces of evidence. First one is, if you do not have any institutional access to science of synthesis, take advantage of the quite liberal policy of TV publishers. They will grant you access for a couple of days. You can go there, play around, and I bet you that if you do that, most of you, if not all of you, will find the product easy to use, very intuitive, and very rich in information. So if you still don't believe me, let me cite two opinions of other people what they think about science of synthesis. And I guess everybody in this room knows this gentleman. And let me read to you what he thinks about science of synthesis. Today's science community must struggle to find ways to effectively distill massive lots of information into real knowledge. Science of Synthesis does this superbly well with carefully selected content on synthetic organic chemistry that has been written and edited by leading authorities from around the world. Science of Synthesis is a must-have for all universities and research institutions involved in synthesis. That's the opinion of Professor Ryuji Toyori. Now you may say, okay, the young generation, we are much better at navigating this uh, science space and filter out all the relevant information than the old generation. So let's look at the young stars of synthesis. And we have heard this person just a couple of hours ago. Science of synthesis is an indispensable tome of chemical information organized in an intuitive and logical way. It contains information on nearly every aspect of chemical reactivity and for me it is the go-to resource for rapidly learning about the new area. I use it regularly in preparation for classes and for consulting visits. It simply gives me the information I need far more easily than any search engine is capable of. And very often contains references and insights that cannot be found anywhere else. The opinion of Professor Phil Barry. 
I have nothing to add to this. <laughs> Except that I think science of synthesis, TV publisher cares about the quality of the science. But TV publisher does not only care about the quality of the science, TV publisher also cares about the scientists. And therefore, TV generously sponsors two important awards. The first one is the TV Ayupak Award, which has become a very major prize for scientists, chemists under the age of 40, who have had an important impact on the field. And if you go to the list of the former awardees, starting with Stuart Schreiber and Paul Knoschel in the 80s, going through the list to Neil Gark and Seth Herson, it reads like the who is who. And today, we have the pleasure of starting a new award, the Dr. Margaret Fall Women in Chemistry Award, named after Dr. Margaret Fall, who is Vice President of Drug Product Technologies of Amgen. So whatever that means, <laughs> I think I can say that she is probably one of the most visible, if not the most visible, female chemist in the pharmaceutical arena. And we were very happy, Science of Synthesis was very happy that we could convince Margaret Fall to join the board. And when Margaret joined the board, she came up with the idea, so let's listen, let's do something to promote women in science. And this idea was very enthusiastically received by the board and very generously supported by the publisher. And of course we want to give this award in recognition for excellence in science, made by female scientists within the first 15 years of their independent career. At the same time, this award certainly also has a second message at the data level. And the message we also want to convey is that we all know that, that female scientists are still underrepresented in our discipline, and not only in our discipline. And I think we all know that this eventually has to change. And we also know that there is not just one mechanism and one button that you have to press and miraculously, prodigiously, everything will be good. There are many mechanisms that we have to work on. And one mechanism is to show role models, female role models, the young generation, the next generation, to send out the message, if you are a young female scientist, chemist, why do you not consider a possible career paths in science that can be very rewarding and satisfactory at the same time. So we had an open call for this award. We were very pleased that we got in the first round about 30 nominations from North America, from Europe, and from Asia. So what, that was a very good situation. Of course, we then had the hard task to select the winner. And this task was charged, uh, there was a selection committee charged with this task. And I would like to mention two little aspects. The first one is, except for Margaret Fall, Eric Carrera, and myself, all the other jury members have no connections to science of synthesis. And they were in the majority. So we want to make sure here again that we award the most deserving candidate and not our bodies. That's important. And the second thing, it's an award especially for women in science. So I think it's also more than appropriate that the majority of the board members have been female colleagues, accomplished female colleagues. So they had the strong voice also on this decision-making process. The outcome is, Professor Sarah Grisman. For me, it's the only thing that's left now is to hand the microphone over to Margaret. She will introduce the first recipient to you and to congratulate Sarah on this very well deserved award and to thank Tibet for making it possible. Thank you.